الله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أنزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا والصلاة والسلام على من أذهب عنهم الرجس أهل البيت وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم وقوله الحق وهو أصدق الصادقين وأحسن القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال فأبينا أن يحملنها وأشفقنا منها وحملها الإنسان إنه كان ظلوما جهولا my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The last one, Kareem, said to me, inshallah, I mean, I'll be able to speak in the Arabic and the English. I mean, I'll say that more things will be in the English, but inshallah, the brothers, I mean, you know, they get a lot of ideas and stories that, inshallah, will be in the English. عرب إن شاء الله إلى قدر إمكانيتنا صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد year after year we come and we tend to celebrate the birth of our first Imam Imam Amir al-Mu'minin سلام الله تعالى عليه we extract lessons from his life we take principles from his character and we try to follow the footsteps that he stepped on this earth. Yet many times without the individual even noticing, he tends to take the character of the Imam Salamullah Ta'ala Alayhi and besides seeing him as he wanted to be seen, there begins to become a cultural understanding of our Imam. Now firstly, it should be noted that any remembrance of Ali ibn Abi Talib is ibadah. As the blessed narration tells us, dhikru aliyin ibadah. The remembrance of Ali ibn Abi Talib is worship. So whether you mention him through the ways that the narrations mentioned him or you mention him through how you want him to be mentioned and how you want to perceive him, it's always going to be ibadah. Dhikru aliyin ibadah. No, ex no exceptions, no what, ifs, and buts. Yet when we look at the words of Shaheed Murtaba Mutahari, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayh, this grand revolutionary character, a character who was who had the bravery and courage to challenge the status quo. Because you have some who may, as one would say, adapt to the status quo. He becomes one with, with, with society. Yet others, he doesn't mind challenging. He doesn't mind poking the norms for the better. And this is what we learn from Sayyid al-Shuhada wa Abi al-Ahrar, Imam. Abu Abdullah al Hussein, salam Allah ta'ala alayhi. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he challenged the status quo. Yazid wanted something, yet Imam al Hussein alayhi salam clearly didn't have a problem in challenging what Yazid la'anatullah ta'ala alayhi wanted to the extent that he would say, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ دِينُ مُحَمَّدٍ لَمْ يَسْتَقِمْ إِلَّا بِقَتْلِ يَا سُيُوفِ خُذِينِ He says, if the swords, if this is what it takes to establish and to make firm the teachings of my grandfather Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam except with the swords taking me then ya suyuf khudini O swords come and take me I'm ready to give my neck if this is what it has to take to challenge the status quo to, to bring forward what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger tell us to believe in Shaheed Murtaba Mutahari rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi comes and he says Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was killed twice once in Karbala, this is what we all know. We know for a fact that Imam Hussain was murdered and martyred and brutally killed on the 10th of 
Muharram. Yeah, what is this second time that our Imam is referring to? He's referring to the understanding that we may give of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. An understanding which serves as an injustice to his message. Somebody comes and says, How? There are many ways of remembering Ahlul Bayt, Salamullah ta'ala alayhim. And each one of them is great. Each one of them has ajr. Each one of them, perhaps we can say, has a benefit. If it, of course, brings one closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all means to Ahlul Bayt. Means, wasail. لكي نفتهم مفهوم أهل البيت عليهم السلام الشعائر الحسينية كلها وسائل لكي نفتهم المفهوم الحسيني الرسالة الحسينية ها which is لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلوا على محمد وآل محمد yet the key word over here الكلمة المهمة هي وسيلة they are means وسائل لكي نفتهم مفهوم ورسالة الحسين سلام الله تعالى عليه they are means to understand the message problems begin to happen injustices begin to take place and limitations begin to be put on the message of أهل البيت سلام الله تعالى عليه when the means becomes an ends when the وسيلة becomes a غاية now, when I want to remember, for example, Imam Ali alayhi salam, I'll remember him through clapping. This is great. And inshallah, al mullah Mahdi Allah yahfudha, yunawr al-majlis inshallah bil mawalid al-inshallah al-thawriya wal-ra'iha bi sawtihi al-jameel. Means, sitting down in a majlis like this, is a means to understand Ali ibn Abi Talib, which in essence gets us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the verses will come, Ya Ayyuladheen Amanu, Ati'u Allah, wa Ati'u Rasul, wa Ulil Amri Minkum. Ita'at Ali ibn Abi Talib, hiya Ita'at al Rasul, wa Ita'at Ali ibn Abi Talib, wa Ita'at al Rasul, hiya Ita'at Allah, Azza wa Jal. They're connected. Meaning, it's all ways of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet when such a gathering and such rituals, if you want to refer to it, such great forms of remembrance, when they become the actual goal of understanding Ahlul Bayt السلام, there becomes an injustice. Now Imam al Hussein السلام, becomes only 10 days. Not 365, 55 days, he's forgotten. 10 days, you'll see that he's remembered. Imam Ali alayhi huh? salam, 364 days, he's just a thought. For one day, he'll come and be remembered. And this is all great, like I've mentioned. This is all ajr. Yet when such things become the goal, the hadaf, the ghaya, besides our wasila, problems begin to take place. Yani, Imam, alayhi, Imam Ali alayhi salam, this great character, which Christians have come forward and praised, huh? Paul is salama, this Christian man, where he says, huh? where he says, the Shi'i isn't simply the one who says, I am Shi'i. The Shi'i is the one who loves justice. The Shi'i is the one who loves truth. Huh? Tr the Shi'i is the one who loves haqq. And since Ali ibn Abi Talib loved haqq, we love him as well. Christians have come and praised the name of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Non-Muslims have come and mentioned Gandhi, primary example, which we all have come across perhaps, where he comes and he says, Husayn, huh? He says, I have learned from Imam al Hussein alayhi salam how to be oppressed, but still be victorious. This is a Hindu, Christians, Jews. Why? Huh? Because his character was universal. His character was grand. This great character, is it simply something that should be limited and compressed and squeezed to simply a one-night program? Is this what his character deserves? This is the question. Is the great character of Imam Hussein alayhi salam a character that simply calls for 10 days remembrance? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a Lord? That deserves simply to be remembered for 30 days of the month of Ramadan. The answer, obviously, the critical thinker comes up with the answer, which is no. And all of us 
inshallah, are critical thinkers, not simply ones who accept what is told. Because Imam Ali alayhi salam, he comes and he tells us very clear, where he tells Kumail ibn Ziyad al nakhai he tells him, Ya Kumail, al-nasu thalaf, huh? alimun rabbani, wa muta'allimun ala tariq najat, huh? وَهَمَجٌ رُعَاحٌ يَتْبَعُونَ كُلَّ نَاعِقٍ وَيَمِيلُونَ مَعَ كُلِّ الرِّيحٍ لا يستضيئون بنور العلم شيئا ولا يركنوا إلى ركن ودين فينجو meaning they do not learn from now three kinds of people Imam Ali Salam comes and tells us the first person is the one who gives knowledge he's busy giving knowledge to the people the second person is the one who's taking knowledge he's taking what's being told and he applies it to his life to better himself as an individual the third person, he says, Hamajun. He says, they are everywhere. And we see these kinds of people. Today, when you see problems taking place in Pakistan, huh? you see Shia being killed. And the problem is where, brothers and sisters? We see even in places like Saudi, you see lovers of Ahlul Bayt being killed. You go to Afghanistan, people, lovers of Ahlul Bayt. And the problem is where they're not being attacked and killed and murdered by ones who don't know La ilaha illallah. No, no. They're not being killed and murdered by ones who don't know nothing about Muhammad. No, no. They're the very ones who say, La ilaha illallah. And they pray five times a day. He's fasting. Huh? He's the very one. But he's the same one who has the sword and he has the audacity to go and kill. You'll see the same people who say, We love Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the same ones who are attacking the graves and shrines of Hijr ibn Adil Kindi, for example. Of Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. Of Zainab sallallahu alayhi wa Huh? Today you see domes, you'll see pieces which have fell from the blessed dome of Zainab alayhi salam. Why? Because people who claim to love, but their actions don't follow their words. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and says to the Holy Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells him in reference to the types of verses within the Holy Quran. He says, he comes and he tells us, huh? Those who have a disease, an illness in their heart, they follow the mutashabah of the verse. Huh? They try to change the verses and they try to change the meaning of the Holy Quran. We'll come to this verse, inshallah, later on, which will come and support a point being made. Huh? These are the same people, yet you find them attacking, you find them breaking, you find them doing things which aren't supposed to be done. Then why? Because these are people huh, who by tongue may say we love, by heart it's the exact opposite. And this is what nifaq is. Yeah, we come to the main point. Therefore, when it comes to Imam Ali alayhi salam, is there an ability to limit it? No, there isn't. And that's why if we want to have a better understanding of our blessed Imam, we have to understand the Imam for what he represented, not for simply who he was. Because brothers and sisters, we have individuals and then we have principles that the individual stood for. And let me make this point clear. You have a shakhsiya, and then you have a mafhum. Characters lived to promote a principle. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, salamullah ta'ala alayhi, and we do not want to remove any intrinsic greatness from the Imam himself. But one aspect that gave greatness to our Imam was the principles that he stood for. One problem again, in many, in, in many communities perhaps you can say, or in many um, mentalities of Ahlul Bayt, salam, they'll take the character but they forget the principle. Huh? Ali, Ali, Hussein, we love them so much. They're the best. Place them on mountains, on pedestals, praise them 24-7. Yet you come and you ask him, Habib, is an Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, you love him so much, I understand. He died for salah. Huh? Do you think it's a good idea maybe to wake up for salah al subuh? He comes in and tells you, no, no, I love Imam Hussein. Yani ma'al-asaf, they say in Masirat al-Arba'een, people are running towards Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the man who died for salah, and then somebody would stand up and he would, he would say, it's salah time. Huh? Do you know what he would say? He would say, Habib, ya salah, ahna rahin lil ihsan. Salah, salah tiji, bas al ihsan. Muhu al ihsan maat min ajil salah, ya habib, ya mawla, ya taj rasi. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he came and he died. So the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be mentioned. Wasn't it Imam Amir al Mu'minin, salamullah ta'ala alayhi, if I'm not mistaken, in Safin? 
He's fighting in the heat of the battle. He says, stop. Salah time has started. Somebody comes to him, tells me, Mom, Ya Salah, we're fighting the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would tell them, isn't it because Salah we're fighting? Huh? Meaning, you have the character, then you have the principle. Problems take place when we take the character, but we forget the principle is that the character died and lived to promote. Therefore, when we come to Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, and in precise, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen salamullah ta'ala alayhi, on a night like this, we want to understand what is the principle that he lived for? What's the understanding that makes Ali ibn Abi Talib salamullah ta'ala alayhi great? And like I said, he has intrinsic greatness because I remember mentioning such points and somebody would come to you and he would say, Zen, until you're always saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave greatness to him. The principles, she for him, the Imam himself. Huh? Give him greatness as it. No, no, the Imam has intrinsic greatness. He was a man of truth. He was a man of morality. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even before he was a prophet, he was known as Asadiq al Amin. He was known as the honest, the trust, before he even received Nubu. And of course, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a prophet when Adam was between. Water and clay. He says, Kuntu nabiyan wa Adam bain al ma'i wa teen. He says, I was a prophet when Adam was still between water. He was, he was created as a prophet. Huh? Awala ma khalaq Allah nur Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Yeah, if you want to use the official term where he became a prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the age of 40. Then we say even before Nubuwa, in that sense, even though he was always a prophet, he had great virtues and great characteristics that he was known for. Therefore, when we come to Imam Ali alayhi salam, the question that needs to be asked is, what is this understanding that makes him great? And mind you, brothers and sisters, when we speak about this understanding, which is هَذِهِ wilaya of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, مفهوم الولاية We've heard this many times ولاية ولاية What is this ولاية? I as a Shi'i And we don't like you to use these terms Shi'i So you need to split between the two sects We are Muslims, yes, no doubt But at the end of the day There has to be a sense of confidence In what you believe in To what extent are you going to compromise or Not necessarily compromise But spread the message of unity why you compromise your beliefs? We believe in unity, but we don't believe in compromising. I say I'm a Shia. Isn't this understanding? I many times we say muali. I am a muali. I am a follower. Isn't this mualat? This wilaya, if you want to use the term. What is it that makes this wilaya? What is wilaya? Number one. Huh? Number two. I want to come and I want to see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and speaks about wilayah in the Quran or is it simply narrations? Because a lot of times when we want to prove the wilayah of Imam Ali alayhi salam, we'll come and we'll use the narrations. We'll come and we'll use the hadith. Question, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak about wilayah in the Quran? I'll give you two verses. Let's begin. Let's see exactly what I'm trying to mention. Firstly, when you come to the narrations of Ahlul Bayt, salamullah ta'ala alayhim ajma'een, You'll notice that they speak about this wilaya in such a unique fashion that you begin to ask yourself, what indeed is this wilaya? I'll give you an example. Our eighth Imam, Imam Rudha, salamullah ta'ala alayhi, he comes and he says, The similitude of those who prostrated down to Adam alayhi salam are similar to those who gave bay'ah. To Amir al Mu'mineen. I want you just to amal al abara, to amal al hadith al sharif of our eighth Imam, Salamullah ta'ala alayhi. The similitude of those who prostrated down to Adam alayhi salam are like those who accepted the bay'ah of Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And then he continues and he says, and the similitude of those who drifted away perhaps from the wilaya or from bay'ah towards Amir al Mu'mineen are like those who did what? Who did not prostrate down to Adam salam. Over here, the Imam salam, is drawing a line. He draws a line for us between those who accepted wilaya and between those who didn't. He comes and he says, those who prostrated down to Adam salam, 
they are like the ones who accepted the wilaya huh? of Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. And those who did not give bay'ah to Imam Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam are like those who denied to prostrate down to Adam, which was who? Which was Iblis. Then the Imam, what is he saying? He's saying, Al-Khat Bayn Al-Malaika Wal-Shaytan Huwa Khat Al-Wilaya Imagine, Imam, he's giving ahamiyya He's telling you, it's not simply come and remember him and, and, and feel happy that I've remembered him one day out of the year and leave Look what he, he's giving, he's raising it يرفع لنا ذكر الولاية يرفع ويبين لنا أهمية ولاية علي بن أبي طالب سلام الله تعالى عليه He says الخط بين الملائكة He says those who prostrated were the ملائكة No doubt And the ones who did not prostrate was إبليس أنا خير من خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين Meaning الخط بين الملائكة والشيطان هو خط الولاية الخط بين الحق والباطل الولاية الحق بين العلم because Adam عليه السلام وعلم Adam الأسماء he was known for his knowledge and will come was ولاية الحق the, the line between علم and جهل ignorance and knowledge ولاية the line between humility التواضع والتكبر ولاية الحق بين الأسود والأبيض ولاية between black and white is ولاية meaning ولاية is something that's primary ولاية isn't just something which I come and I mention and I, I feel happy that I believe in and then I go back home and that's it no 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 the verse comes in tells us إنا عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال we have what? we have proposed the أمانة what is this amana? Maya hadhi al-amana Alati uridat ala al-samawati wa al-ard wa al-jibal Fa-abayna ayyahmilnaha Wa ashfaqna minha Not only did they go away from it They were scared of it Ashfaqna minha He told the skies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Do you want to accept this amana? Abayna ayyahmilnaha We can't hold it It's important It's too much for us Wa ashfaqna minha he told the earth, do you want to accept this wilaya? No, no, no. He told the mountains, do you want this amana? No, 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 no. Sin. Who held it? Huh? Insan came and held it. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and says, إنه كان ظلوما جهولا He was an oppressed. He, he was ظلوم, meaning he oppressed it, and he was jahul. He was ignorant. What is this amana? It is no other than the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Salam Allah ta'ala alayhi. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Otherwise, what could it be? If you really think about it, what could it be if not for this grand muhimma of Ahlul Bayt, alayhum salam? Somebody may come and say, give me more proof from the Holy Quran. When we come and we read in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and tells us, وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ Mubin, brothers and sisters, this verse right here is one of the most primary verses you and I can use to prove that Ali ibn Abi Talib was the missing puzzle for the for the, for the completion of that puzzle called Islam. He was the only one who was able to complete it. Somebody comes and tells me why. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he came to complete a system. This is why we believe he's the best. Somebody comes and asks you, why is the Prophet the best? We come and we tell him that he completed the teachings of the previous Prophets. Adam alayhi salam came with a piece. We can say, I don't know if some of you have watched the Olympics. He came with one baton. He gave it to the next Prophet. He gave it to the next prophet. He gave it, and so on and so forth. The prophet of Islam completed the race. Why? Because he didn't come with new morals. This is an important point. He didn't come with new morals. No. He came to establish an institution of morality. There's a difference. One prophet may come, and he gives you a sifa. For example, Adam alayhi salam was known for his knowledge. And will come. Ibrahim alayhi salam was known for his forbearance. حلم إنه كان حليم أواب for example perhaps he was forbearant حليم عيسى عليه السلام known for his عبادة his his زهد that's why one hadith come and tell us that his roof was the sky his his ground was the earth his food was nature that's why they even say if it was Musa عيسى عليه السلام um, one of the prophets, his stomach would show to be green because he would eat from nature. 
his zuhud, his asceticism, his humility. He would tell all 12 disciples to stack up one after the other. He would tell them, take off your shoes. They would take off their shoes. He would take a bowl of water and he would go and wash each one of their feet. And they would ask him, Ya Rasulullah, what are you doing? Oh, oh, Jesus. He's giving them an example, the humility, the asceticism that a human being is supposed to live with. What is zuhud, by the way? Zuhud is not that somebody may get this understanding that I want to be a zahid. Let me denounce this world. Let me completely detach from material. No, no, no. Islam isn't a religion that says detach from material, that you don't own anything. Islam comes and says that you aren't owned by anything else. There's a difference. Somebody may say, I'm a zahid. So what am I going to do? I'm going to come and I'm not going to own anything. I'm not going to drive a car. I'm going to start walking. I'm not going to go buy nice clothes. I'm going to wear the same clothes year round. Maybe every year I may buy a different clothes. I'm not going to eat. I'm going to live off nature. No, no, this isn't Islam. Islam isn't completely detached and Islam isn't completely throw yourself. Huh? That you're so attached to material that you can't even leave it. I remember one guy hearing the story that he says when he first bought his Mercedes, huh, first day he slept two days in his Mercedes. There's a love, huh? For them. He sleeps in it, he takes care of it. That's why you come, you see some of us, huh, he sees a scratch on his car, it's as if Yom Al Qiyamah has just started. It's a scratch, Mawlai, Habibi. Take it. But there's what? There's an attachment. Islam doesn't say be completely attached like the man who slept two days in his Mercedes. And Islam doesn't completely say be a monk, go on some Japan mountain and, you know, begin to praise. No, no, no. Islam comes and says, let there be a balance. Meaning, not are you completely detached, nor are you completely attached. There's a balance in the picture. Yes, you look nice and you, you try to aim for the best in this world, be it materialistically, even perhaps, for example, maybe. Or be it intellectually, but there ha that balance where, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّتَانْ وَسَطَى What is this wasatiya? Huh? That's a whole bath. That's a new bath in itself. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةٌ وَسَطَى لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاء عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا That wasatiya is a different topic. Yet you come back and you see Isa alayhi salam, he had what? He gave the idea of worship, of obedience, of ibadah, asceticism. Each prophet came with a separate principle, with a separate teaching. The prophet now, he wasn't a man who was supposed to come and bring new teachings. No, 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 that wasn't his job. His job wasn't to come and begin to give you new morals. No, no, no. His job was to take the morals that previous prophets came with and to make a system. Make an institution. But there's another problem. Let's say Musa السلام, was a man of physical battle more than spirituality, for example. Isa السلام, a man of spirituality more than a physical battle. The Prophet of Islam was a man of both. That's why even when you look at Michael Hart, huh, who published this book, The 100 Most Influential People, hmm, he put Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam twice. Huh? Do you know they would tell him? They would tell him why. Firstly, you're not a Muslim. You look at it, he's not a Muslim, Michael Hart. You have greats, such as Jesus, you see him as great, for example, perhaps. Why didn't you place him as number one? Do you know what he would say? He would say, I've never seen anybody who's great, both in secular and spiritual terms, like Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah wasn't only a leader when it came to battles. Of course, we, some may come and say he didn't fight, not even once. He left that for Ali ibn Abi Talib That's a different discussion in itself. We don't want to get into that. Opinions may differ. Another discussion for another time. But you see, he wasn't simply a man of spirituality. He was a man that was down on earth. He was part of the mujtama. He was part of society. He wasn't split. Huh? He wasn't in a different location, completely detached from his ummah. That's why when somebody comes and says that Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, Allah ta'ala, Faraj sharif where is he? Doesn't he see what's happening to Shia? We come and say, yes, he's there. Because the earth will never be left alone from a qa'id. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he comes and he tells us that وَلِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ had to every qawm, there is a guider, and it's impossible for this. لَوْ خُلِيَتْ if this earth was to be detached from a leader, then it would disconnect instantly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy perhaps and his blessings. He's there, the Imam, Allah ta'ala, Farju Sharif, and he sees what's happening, but he's waiting for the green light. Therefore, we come and we see that the earth cannot detach from a leader. 
Therefore, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he, he was leaving very soon. He was leaving this earth very soon. And he needed to give the baton to somebody else who all of these values were manifested and encapsulated within. And this is a vital point, brothers and sisters. Somebody comes and asks you, why is it that Ali alayhi salam became the Khalifa after the Prophet? Why is it that he, what, what was so special about him? Do you know what we say? We say, if the Prophet's goal, إِذَا كَانَ هَدَفُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ أَنْ يُكْمِلَ الْإِسْلَامُ Through bringing moralities in نَمَا خَرْشُ لِيُتَمِّ مَا كَارْمِلْ Akhlaq. He didn't say akhlaq or khulq, makarim. There's a difference. The, the standards of morality. Huh? If he wanted to do that, then he needed somebody who had all of these values within him. That's why when you come and you look at the narration, it comes and tells us that one day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was sitting down with a man by the name of Jundub or perhaps Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiyallahu ta'ala an, and he would say, if you want to see Adam and his knowledge, Abraham and his forbearance, huh? Ayyub and his patience, Jesus and his asceticism, huh? Musa and his command perhaps, then come and look at the individual who's like the star and sun in brightness and like the sky shining bright. He says, I turned around and I saw no other than my master Ali ibn Abi Talib, salamullah ta'ala alayhi, passed by. Therefore, you'll see that all of these values were manifested within him. All of these teachings were within him. And this is why he was able to complete it. Because everything was there within him. You want to see the knowledge of Adam? Then come and look at Ali ibn Abi Talib. You want to come and see the ibadah of Isa? Then come and look at Ali ibn Abi Talib. You want to come and see the forbearance of Ibrahim? Then come and look at Ali ibn Abi Talib. You want to come and see the strength of Musa? Then come and look at Ali ibn Abi Talib. Meaning within Ali, every value is manifested. That's why he comes and he says, وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ Every Everything was within an imam. That's why even furthermore, we come and we say an Eid al-Ghadir on the 18th of the Hijjah, the blessed verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed down to the Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, telling him, al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati bi wilayati Ali ibn Abi Talib, salamullah alayhi, sallu ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. Therefore, I don't know how much time I have left. How is the time looking? Ila rahmatillah. Okay. Five minutes. I'll try to conclude. There was much more to say, but time does not permit. And inshallah, another time, I know there are different parts of the program, but I'll try, I'll try inshallah to just quickly summarize in these five minutes. Therefore, you see, he was manifested every principle. And for that reason, he was able to complete the message. Now, of course, time again, as I mentioned, does not permit me to go into many of the other points that were wanted to be mentioned. But I'll mention just a few verses in, these, in the short time that I have. Verses from the Holy Quran as to how we're able to prove this understanding. Because brothers and sisters, if there's one thing that gives us strength as Shia, is that we're able to prove our teachings from the Holy Quran before Hadith. Hadith comes in addition to support the Holy Quran. But the Quran is what? It's the foundation. It's the bedrock. Therefore, we come to the Holy Quran and we see that two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and tells us, firstly, chapter 4, verse 59, and secondly, chapter 5, verse 55. Why are there two verses? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that if he was to establish it but not clarify it, there's going to be people who are going to come in time and they're going to try to change what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And that's why Christianity fell to a victim of this. Judaism fell to a victim of this. They don't have the official book that was sent to either of their prophets. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came and he said, I'm going to give you one verse that establishes it. Which verse? Chapter 4, verse 59, where Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, ati'u Allah, wa ati'u al-Rasul, wa ulil amri, minkum. O you who believe, establish or believe, hmm? or pay obedience, ita'ah, give ata'ah, ati'u Allah, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَطِعُ الرَّسُولِ And pay obedience to the Prophet. وَأُلِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Who are these أُلِ الْأَمْرِ? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes in and gives you another verse. حَتَّى نَوْبَدِي comes in and says, هَا أُلِ الْأَمْرِ We don't know who they are. It may be person A. It may be the, khali- the khalafa. It may be the jurist of the time. It may be so and so. No, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came and he told you, 459, is it enough for you? I'm going to give you 555. Where he comes and he says, I'm going to tell you who your wali is. Where the verse comes and says, إِنَّمَا وَلْيُكُمُ الله. Brothers and sisters, this is a viral attachment. The two verses which complete one another. إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمْ Allah. And this is the beauty of the Qur'an. The Qur'an it explains itself. فَسِّرُ Quran. Bil Qur'an, Imam Ali alayhi salam tells us, understand Qur'an, it's a self-explanatory book. And this is the beauty of not the one who is saying the message, it's the beauty of the Holy Qur'an itself. This is what the Qur'an comes and tells us. إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهِ Your wali is Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zain, is that enough? No, no, no. And notice the connection. يَا يُلِذِينَ آمِنُ أَطْعَى اللَّهِ وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهِ Same derivative word. إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهِ Your authority is Allah. Is that enough? No, no, no. إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ And the Prophet. Is that enough? No, no, no. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who believe. Oh Allah, please. Tell me who are the ones who believe. Because if you leave it anonymous, we're going to have problems in finding out what the truth is. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. Yes, but he has representatives. The Prophet is there, yet he left this world physically. Therefore, what is this wali that I'm always able to continue connecting to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ He says, those who give charity while they're praying. Today, brothers and sisters, you go to any book. You go to our books, the books of our respected brothers from Sunan Abu Dawood to Bukhari, for example, to Tirmidhi, to Ibn Majah, and the list goes on. You come and you ask, which verse says, who was it he that gave charity? Why in the Ruku'ah? You'll find that no other book comes and tells us of anybody other than Ali ibn Abi Talib, salamullah ta'ala alayhi. Therefore, it's clear that it was him. All of this, brothers and sisters, we come and we conclude in the short minutes that are left. Why is this important? This comes and tells you something. Today in the 21st century, brothers and sisters, we have this message. We have this amana. Imagine what a responsibility is left on our shoulders that you and I have this amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has given to mankind. And only us. We have the true amana. You come and look at how many Muslims live in this world. Let's say, for example, one point, what, what is it? Eight billion. Perhaps it's hitting the ceiling for 2 billion perhaps. Then, of those, how many of them are by label, Mu'aleen, Shia? You can see, for example, 300 million. These 300 million have an unbelievable importance because they have the true amana. Yani, it's not simply something where I come, I remember, I'm happy, I cry, black, we're black, we're white. There's an ahamiyat to the picture. That's why when the Imam, alayhi salam, comes and tells us, he says, Man arifa nafsah, faqad jalla amruh. Look at the hadith. He who knows himself feels important. Here, what does it mean to know myself? One level of knowing yourself is knowing the risala and the message that you believe in. Huh? When this understanding is there, you come and say, wow, what a responsibility do I have? Huh? What a ahamiyya has been placed on my, my, my shoulders. Therefore, what should I do? Huh? What is it that I can do to propagate this message? First and foremost, brothers and sisters, and I conclude in this time that I have, I'll give you three things. What can I do to leave on this note the birth of Imam Ali alayhi salam? To leave from this center feeling the importance. Number one, I have to feel that. It's, yes, it is important. It is very important that I, I have this wilaya. I have this baton. Could you imagine? The Prophet gave the baton to Imam Ali alayhi salam. He gave it to Imam al-Hasan, Imam al-Hasan to Imam al-Hussein, Imam al-Hussein, Zain al-Abidin, Imam al-Baqir, Imam al-Sadiq, Imam al-Kadhim, Imam al-Rudha, Imam al-Adi, Imam al-Jawad, Imam al-Askari, all 12 Imams, huh? They were given the baton one after the other. Do you know who has the baton now? Allahu Akbar. You and I have the baton, huh? It still hasn't reached the Imam. Someone says, what do you mean has reached Imam? He's the Imam. How could we have the baton? Yeah, yes. 
the minute we give it to him, huh? we don't want to say that we have the authority, not the imam. No, no, the imam is the imam. He's infallible. He's been appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me make that clear. I'm not saying that we have this wilayah now. No, no, no. The imam is there for a reason because he's the salah between al-khaliq and al-makhluq. He's the connection between creation and creator. Yet we depend. It depends on us when he's going to rise. Allahu Akbar. The green light, you know, sometimes you're driving, you can't wait until the red light, until the green light comes. Red, red. I remember sometimes I was, uh, there's this one red light. I hate it so much. It's like half an hour. Huh? You're standing there, it's a half an hour red light. It's the most annoying thing in the world. You're waiting, you're waiting. When the green light comes, you're so happy to go. Do you know who's going to give the green light to Imam Mahdi? You and I, brothers and sisters. Because he is muntadhar and he's muntadhar at the same time. He's waiting and he's being awaited more than us waiting for him. Imam says, I'm waiting for you. He says, I may be, I may be in ghaybah, but you are the one in ghaybah. You come out so I can come out. My ghaybah depends on yours. I'll come out the minute you come out. That's why some may come and say, Imam isn't here. He's in some distant land. No, no, I'll end with this story. I've told you I'm going to end this time for sure. I'm going to end inshallah. There was once a man in Iraq in Sijin Abu Ghraib. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give give a freedom to every sajin that has been oppressed by the zalim on this earth. Ilahi amin. He was being oppressed and he's being whipped, whip after whip until the man falls unconscious. Huh. He leaves. He, he has no more power. He falls unconscious. Imam comes to him. He tells him in his dream, Imam Sahib Zaman, he tells him, the man complains to him. He tells him, oh, Imam, I've been complaining. I called your name. Ya Imam, Ya Imam, Adirikni, Adirikni, why didn't you come out? Imam tells him, how many times did they hit you? He says, they hit me 100 times. He would say, remove your shirt from your back. He would remove it, and he would see simply 10 hits. Imam, Ajallah Ta'ala, for Sharif, would turn around, and he would remove his shirt. He would say, who do you think took the other 90? Meaning the imam is there, and the imam knows, but he's waiting for you and I to hasten his reappearance. That's why, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us to understand the ahmiyyah of this wilayah, and that's why the dua comes in and says, and we raise our hands, we say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi ja'alana minal mutawasi. من المتمسكين بولاية علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام أنا أقرأ لكم شم بيت إن شاء الله نهيئ المنبر للملة إن شاء الله بس نحميكم ها بيكم حيل إن شاء الله يا الله شم إن شاء الله أبيات مدح في أهل البيت عليهم السلام وإن شاء الله نسألكم الدعاء يا آل بيت رسول الله يا حبكم فرض من الله في القرآن أنزل كفاكم كفاكم من عظيم شأن أنكم من لم يصلي عليكم لا صلاة له يقول لك لو فتشوا قلبي رأوا وسطهم لو فتشوا قلبي قلبي رأوا وسطهم سطران قد خط بلا كاتبي العدل والتوحيد في جانب العدل والتوحيد في جانب وحب أهل البيت في جانب صلوات
يقول لك ولا مال ولا مال انا قلبي بحب علي ثابت اي انا قلبي بحب علي ثابت ولا مال بيوم الليلة ولدي نفعك ولا مال والله بيوم لا ولد ينفع ولا مال نفعك حب علي حامي الحمية صلوات وسلم على محمد وعلى محمد نسأل الله لكم الموفقية والقبول إن شاء الله وعيد مبارك عليكم جميعا ونسأل الله أن يرزقنا جميعا زيارة الأمير بحق محمد وآل محمد والشفاعة منه ومن أهل بيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم جميعا ببركة الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد